it's time for another exciting adventure in church history. Over the last few videos, we looked at how the Reformation led to several different church bodies developing. The Roman Catholics, the Lutherans, the Reformed, the Anglicans, and the Anabaptists. We also saw how the Lutherans became very focused on teaching correct information about God in order to help their members understand why Lutherans were in line with the Bible. And this became known as the Age of Lutheran Orthodoxy. We also saw that their heavy focus on having facts straight about God eventually led to a reaction called pietism, which moved focus away from your mind and onto your personal devotion or piety. So much so that pietists tended to act like faith and devotion were basically the same thing. While pietism was spreading like wildfire, there was another major movement that was also spreading fast, rationalism. Rationalism was an unintended consequence of the Reformation. And here's how rationalism came about. Remember that one of the big problems reformers like Luther had with the Catholic Church was that the Catholics said that basically the Roman Catholic Church itself was the highest authority for faith and life. Roman Catholics held that only the Pope and the bishops could rightly interpret the Bible. And the Pope and the bishops were also the guardians of what they called the apostolic tradition, teachings that were supposedly handed down to the bishops from the apostles, but which were never written down by the apostles. Now, Luther and the other reformers argued that only God's word as written in the scriptures could serve as the authority for Christian faith. The Reformation, therefore, led people to lose confidence in the Catholic Church as the sole keeper of the truth. And people were encouraged to look at the Bible for themselves to learn the truth about God. Now, one problem that very quickly emerged from this is that not everyone agreed about what exactly the Bible said. Luther and Calvin had different beliefs, as we saw. Zwingli and the Anabaptists had extremely different beliefs from Luther or Calvin. The Lutherans, the Reformed, the Anglicans, the Catholics, the Anabaptists, they kept arguing with each other about who was right and who was wrong and why. But they never seemed to make a lot of permanent headway in convincing everyone to believe the same things. Now, it's good to understand that one very big reason these groups never seemed to be able to agree with each other is that not every group held the Bible in quite the same esteem. Catholics, of course, didn't just use the Bible, but also the tradition of the church and the authority of the Pope. Catholics very clearly had other sources for their beliefs aside from the Bible. So it isn't surprising that the Catholics had different beliefs than everyone else. But people like Zwingli and the Anabaptists, and to a certain extent, people like John Calvin, also had a view of the Bible that held that everything that's in the Bible must fit perfectly with what human reason also tells us. So, for example, all of these groups felt that if our human reason tells us that human bodies are only in one place, then, to their minds, it cannot be possible that the Bible means that Jesus' body and blood are actually present in the Lord's Supper, since we know that Jesus' body is in heaven at the right hand of the throne of God. In other words, they felt that the beliefs we reach by human reason determine what the Bible can or can't be saying. And for many of these non-Lutheran reformers, therefore, human reason became a source for our beliefs that you could go to right alongside the scripture. And since these different groups were going to two different places for their beliefs about God, to the Bible and to their own human reason, it's also not surprising that they came up with different beliefs than the Lutherans, who were insisting that the Bible alone is the source for our beliefs, and that human reason must submit to what the Bible says. The Bible should not submit to what human reason says. But a lot of people did not notice that many of these groups were going to different places than the Bible to get their ideas about God. They just assumed that everyone was going to the Bible. 
And these people saw the never-ending arguments going on between Lutherans and Reformed and Anabaptists and Anglicans and Catholics. And they started to suspect that maybe the Bible itself was the problem. They started to suspect that maybe the Bible just wasn't clear enough. That no matter how great the scriptures were, they wouldn't ever be able to bring everyone to an agreement about what the truth of God really is. So these kind of people started to very intentionally look in other places than the Bible to find the truth about God. They started looking mainly in two places. First of all, they started looking at philosophy. They turned to human reason completely and tried to think through problems using very careful logic to try to arrive at beliefs that could be shown by logic to be completely true and irrefutable. They wanted to arrive at ideas that you could prove to everyone, no matter what they believed. Rene Descartes was a really famous person in this realm. He had this famous idea, I think, therefore I am. Now, the other place people were going to was in nature. They started doing more experiments and measuring how things moved and interacted with each other. And they were hoping that by measuring the world around them and observing it carefully, they could find universal laws of nature that were always going to be true for everyone, that could be proven to be true through experiments so that everyone would have to agree with the truth they could demonstrate. And that was the beginning of what we call science today. Folks like Isaac Newton and his laws of motion are a great example of this. And this movement to turn away from the Bible as a source of truth about God, and to instead try to find truth through human experience, through study of nature and through philosophy, that was known as rationalism because it assumed that all truth was rational and they believed that rational human thought would be able to figure out all the truth that we could ever need to know about the world and about God. And it needs to be said, these early rationalists were very much trying to figure out God and not just the world. Now, unsurprisingly, the God that these rationalists thought they discovered was not very similar to the God of the Bible. These rationalists certainly viewed God as powerful and as the creator of natural laws. They viewed God as the one who set laws that governed how the world worked, things like the laws of physics, and also the God who set laws for how people should behave, moral laws. But that was about it. The rationalists completely dismissed the idea that God was triune, that he was father, son, and spirit, because human reason could never figure that out. And they also mostly left out the idea of sin, that people are separated from God. They largely left behind the idea that Jesus saves from sin or that he sacrificed himself to bring us God's grace. Mostly, these rationalists believed that God was the one who controlled things and that Jesus was more or less just a good teacher who showed us how people should behave. And that was about it. The rationalist dream of discovering the truth of God and of human life and of the world we live in, well, it never panned out. I mean, just looking at the world today shows, quite obviously, people never did end up agreeing about God. People still don't agree about human beings and what they are and how they should live. And even scientists don't agree all that much about the nature and the limits of science. Even so, Rationalism has had a profound effect on our world today. It's behind modern science and most of our technology. It's behind much of our way of life. And it's had a huge bearing on people's perception of Christianity and of all religions. It also had a lot to do with the beginning of the United States of America. And it played a very big role in bringing a huge number of Lutherans to America. But that's a story for another time.